So this evening we're fortunate enough to uh, steal a few precious moments from uh, Matthew Bassett, our principal timpanist, and he's going to talk a little bit about how he got started as a musician and his instruments here, the, the timpani. Good evening, Matt. How you doing? Good, good. Um, a, couple, a couple quick questions. Uh, what age did you start playing percussion? Well, I started percussion, I think I was in fourth grade, although I had taken like the obligatory piano lessons that my mother made me take that uh -huh. I hated at the time, but um, I'm very glad that she made me do, uh, probably in second grade. Uh, so in fourth grade, I had been really pushing to start playing percussion, basically because there was a kid down the street who had a drum set, and I thought it was really cool. And so uh, I was able to start playing, and had took lessons at a local music shop for a while, and um, then kind of progressed up the teacher ladder from there. Oh, very cool. So, so uh, a neighbor kid down the street was your inspiration to start playing percussion? Pretty much. He had a cool drum set. Very cool. So that, that took care of my next question, actually. Um, so I'm guessing that you didn't start on the timpani, that you actually started on probably snare drum or something a little less complicated. Yeah, most, most students, when they start playing percussion, um, start either just learning how to use their hands properly on a snare drum, or um, also these days it's common to start on snare drum and on mallets. Um, young students will start on snare drum in a small bell kit okay. that they can take home and then they can practice. Um, so, on what, bigger what, what kind school. of instruments fall into the mallet category? Uh, xylophone, bells, vibraphone, marimba. So, a pitched instrument? Yep. Per se. Okay. So taking a look, taking a look at your timpani, um, could you tell us a little bit about? I mean, wh why are there four drums here, um, and how how have they evolved over time? Absolutely. Well, as far as evolving over time, timpani in some respects are very similar to the way they were uh, 300 years ago. There's a copper bowl. Down here. Okay. And there are these rods that pull the head down and give it tension, which um, when you put more tension on the head, the pitch goes higher. When you put less tension on the head, it goes lower. Now, originally, timpani were simpler. They had the bowl and these rods, and you would turn these nuts, and you'd have to turn each one um, kind of the same amount to get up in pitch or down in pitch. Oh, wow. um, eventually, a pedal mechanism was developed. Maybe you can get gonna, a shot I'm going to come that. back here and take yeah. a look. So the pedal lets you move all of these spots simultaneously so that um, you can bring the whole drum to different pitches quickly. And in fact, with the pedal, I can play like scales. change the pitch as I'm playing. So it's, so it's very similar to the gas pedal of a car where you push it down and it, the speed goes up, but in this case you push it down and the pitch, pitch goes, goes up. up. That's right. Okay. Very cool. What, are, what is the role of the timpani in, in the orchestra? Well, that's a great question because um, timpani has a lot of functions in the orchestra. Sometimes you're more like a percussionist where you have to be very percussive and drummy with your sound the drum set. Other times you need to be more within the texture of the orchestra and sound more like a bass instrument. Or sometimes you have to um, blend with the woodwinds or the strings. I can show that really. So if I want to sound more um, drummy and percussive, I can use these quite hard sticks. These are all timpani mallets. That's right. So look at all, and how do you, how do you decide what you're gonna, I mean, have you just worked on all of these so you know how each of them sound? Right. In fact, I, I made every one of those sticks in, those, in that box. You um, made them all by hand? Right. They're made of bamboo. Sometimes they have um, 
the inner part of this head is sometimes made of wood or felt, and then it's covered with felt, either a little bit of felt so that it's very hard sounding or a lot of felt so that it's very soft sounding. As far as knowing what to use, part of it has to do with when the piece of music you're playing was written, the style of the composer, the style um, that's being used in that particular passage of music. And that's something we work out in the rehearsal process. I'll experiment with different things until I find the, the sound that I think is best oh, wow. for that piece. So you, you don't necessarily know exactly what you're going to be using each, each week in the orchestra. When you come in for that first rehearsal, you're trying new things all the time. Exactly, and that's why I have so many sticks in the box, so that I have a lot of things I can choose from. Wow, wow. So you, you mentioned uh, different passages and whatnot. Could you play us maybe a famous passage for the timpani or, or one of your favorite licks or something like that? <laughs> sure. I'll zoom out a little bit here. because we're about to start a concert and I know you got to get the drums warmed up a little bit. What do you love the most about playing in the BPO? Uh, well, there are so many things. Um, I love the great music that we get to play and I love being part of a large ensemble and, and getting to do what I do, those things like picking the, the sticks and shaping the character of any given performance and playing within that sound of, of a large orchestra. And of course, I really love uh, the people that I work with and the fact that, that they share the same enthusiasm for the kind of music uh, uh, I love. Awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. All right.